Great, so we begin our presentation on experiencing and emulating the cosmic. Now in terms of experiencing the cosmic, we just did that with our meditation period. We rose up into the cosmic. Meditation is the central practice of spirituality. But in a Rosicrucian order, we learn many exercises and lessons. There's the visualization. Um, there's the capacity to sense the auras in others uh, and our own aura. Um, telekinesis to sense impressions that have been recorded in objects. Uh, we learn how to extend metaphysical aid, which we applied in our meditation and many other things. All of these things presented to us in a systematic way help us increasing our experience of the cosmic. Related to that, there's the concept of emulating the, cons the cosmic. That refers to from our lumen consciousness, put those ideas into practice. Shape our environment, shape our relationships by that inspiring idealism that we experienced in the cosmic. <clears throat> One way to think about this <clears throat> is through literally and through the analogy of a painter. Here, for example, we see the renowned a German Romantic painter, Caspar David Friedrich in his studio. It's a painting by George Friedrich Kirstein. It's oil on canvas, it dates from 1811. But we see the master painter here, Caspar David Friedrich. He's painting, looks like a waterfalls and a, a mountain scene. We have the light coming from in from outside. We see his various tools, but he uses his inspired conception and experience of the cosmic to, to present something beautiful, inspiring to us uh, decades, decades later. Similarly, we can do this in our own lives, no matter what line of work we, we find ourselves in. It, yes, it requires applying the law of creativity and using imagination. Now, sometimes imagination is thought of in a negative sense, but in it, when it's properly applied, it's very good to have lots of imagination and channel that through our cosmic impressions and our reasoning. When we do have a, per a perfect balance between experiencing the cosmic and emulating the cosmic, you can apply the law of the triangle or the law of manifestation. We have two polarities, somewhat like the, po the positive negative charge, electricity that come together for the, electric for the electricity to flow, or we have the north and south pole of a magnet when they are perfectly blended and we have the magnetic full field and the magnetic force. The same when the experience of the cosmic is properly blended with emulating the cosmic, it leads us to self mastery. Mastery in the sense of being uh, acting in a way that's harmonious uh, with all natural and spiritual laws in our environment and those are, are those we are associated with. So as we increase our experience of the cosmic and equally blend that by applying it in emulating the cosmic, we'll move ourselves closer to self-mastery and in union with God. We think of uh, or the divine within. We think of this as, as, as mysticism as in the art and science of love, the direct experience of the divine within. Both of these polarities here will assist us in achieving those matters. Now one could say, well, why can't I just concentrate on experiencing the cosmic. Won't that make me one with the one and achieve the purpose uh, of our ultimate aim of life? We'll find though that if, if we just concentrate here without working to emulate the cosmic, we'll tend to find that actually our capacity to attune with the cosmic will start to be diminished. And to a certain extent, our spiritual life will dry up 
there has to be the law of balance applied. We've having this, part of the reason we have these inspiring cosmic experiences is to work on our nature, transmute and transform ourselves. Whatever trauma or challenging experiences we've had in our life that have set up laws in our subconscious, the experience of the cosmic will help us, give us the strength to see those through, but we have to act um, and emulate the cosmic to undertake the transmutation. At the same time, if we just want to try to stay at this point of the triangle to emulating the cosmic, a little cosmic inspiration goes a long way, days, weeks, months, or longer. But at a certain point, we need to come back to that deep well within ourselves to get the inspiration to continue to emulate the cosmic. Then when we've got them both together and we're matching them up well, then finally again, there'll be the breakthrough in the self, continued development and self mastery. You know, uh, we often talk about uh, attuning with the divine within or the master within. And we use that to expression our, our, deep, our deepest nature that is connected with the infinite intelligence. It's our birthright. It's a wonderful source we always have for strength and guidance. We need to seek that guidance through the meditation and other spiritual exercises, but then we need to follow it. We need to follow through. The following through will also signal to our, our inner self that we're serious on the spiritual path and that it'll be more forthcoming to us. Part of this then is we need to convert our cosmic impressions or emulate those cosmic impressions in the world around us. And one of them, I know many of you do great service to the order and that way you're converting your cosmic impressions into service to the order and others. You know, I think of the traditional Rosicrucians, Elbert and Alice Hubbard. They created the Roy Croft in East Aurora, New York and attracted many people there. They had envisioned in the cosmic through their experience of cosmic consciousness, what an ideal or utopian community would be. And they centered it around an inspiring act, arts and crafts tradition. That was their way of emulating the cosmic and fulfilling their mission in life and service to others. And we think of the, the night, I should say the night and nurse Florence Nightingale through her mystical experiences. She was guided towards nursing. She got her training, but then she also helped formulate how nursing should be expressed and done as an institution and it's, and it's take and founded it and it's helped found it in its modern form. This is another way that inspiring conceptions from the cosmic can be brought down to earth. I think of many scientists our now case, of course, is Albert Einstein. He often spoke of an uplifted or uh, mystical state of consciousness. It helped guide him in generating the special relativity followed by the general relativity. Yes, he had to learn tensor analysis and some of the advanced non-Euclid, non particularly non-Euclidean geometry to do that. But it required the inspiration of the cosmic to gear and guide his reasoning and his inspiration to be able to come up with these new, new things or dis these discoveries that were already in the cosmic. We think of the inspiring music that we heard during the meditation or think of the music such as from Beethoven or the Ode to Joy or in the more modern period, for example, the Moody Blues Tuesday afternoon. Often you'll feel an uplift of the, towards the cosmic when you're hearing this music and that can be in part knowing or unknowingly on the part of the musician that they've attuned with the cosmic. Somewhat like uh, two tuning forks of the same frequency put together. When we hear that music, it draws us to tune, to vibrate like that tuning fork. In other words, to reach that cosmic experience with the art, artist or musician had, and we're drawn into the cosmic like they were. Just to give you some other ideas, and I'll bring it down even more to earth, but I think, I think of, for example, here in North America, 
the, uh, the great teacher, the peacemaker and avatar among the Haudenosaunee become the uh, League of the Five Nations and later the Six Nations. He gave the great law of peace to his peoples. That was inspired through the cosmic, but it was a very inspired teaching for how people can live uh, peacefully together. It was a code, a code and laws um, that people can share, men and women can be respected and have active roles. Indeed, when the Europeans first came to this continent, they're among the Haudenosaunee, many native peoples, they saw something that they weren't used to. Women were being treated with respect and had important roles in society. This was one of the important lessons uh, for the Europeans coming here, but it was guided through the cosmic, through such figures as the peacemaker. I know many of you work in the healthcare profession and all, that can be, I know, a very demanding profession. You may deal with things that matter that people have experienced trauma. It may be physically or psychologically. You know, day after day to do that type of work, it's good to be going into the deep fountain of the cosmic to strengthen oneself. You know, the outer self, it cannot maintain uh, undying sustained optimism. It needs the help uh, of the inner, inner self to do that. It's important in these matters of experiencing and emulating the cosmic that in this balance, we have to balance our inner and outer nature. Our inner nature has certain jobs, our outer nature has certain jobs. Our outer nature uh, job is not to have the overall guidance in our life. That requires a much deeper form of wisdom that's in the inner self. The outer self has got to, in a way, surrender to the inner self. Now, one could say, well, I don't really like the idea of surrender. It sounds like losing. This is not losing. This is, in a way, is letting the inner self do its job and the outer self do its job and not let the outer self try to do things that the inner self reads, really needs to do, like that deeper inner guidance. Many situations in life, yes, we've got enough information, we've got enough training, the reasoning can handle it. But for many things, it requires the infinite resources of the cosmic um, to know how to proceed. And I think you'll find many times uh, when you're working with healing of others or in challenging situations in your life or work, family life, that deeper inner guidance from the master women will come forward. That's part of the value of doing meditation regularly. Because when we really need that guidance, we can immediately turn inward and it'll come forward to us. The inner self knows that we're serious, we've paid attention and we're worthy. One of the things that we can do daily to help with this is just, you know how we talked at the beginning of our meditation to breathe um, deeply, we can make that a way of life. You know, it seems like a very simple act, but we're drawing in the cosmic essence in our breath. I find for myself, but others, others as well, is often just to concentrate on breath through the nostrils, and that'll automatically force us to take deep breaths. If you add to that deeper breathing throughout your day, ideation on God or on the, or the divine within, then one's whole day becomes a meditation. There's a, there's a calmness. And that calmness is very healing to oneself, but others that we come in contact with. You know, part of uh, this experiencing and emulating the cosmic is uh, letting go. Turning inward for the, yes, for the outer, the outer self to the inner self, but also letting go of things that are no longer of value in our life. You know, every, every now sometimes that's challenging for the outer self, but it, it can be reassured by the inner self that everything of value that's worth caring for, it can be spiritualized. The rest can be let go. That frees us up and have a much more sense of buoyancy in our life. It's a little bit like a gong that some we use in some of our affiliate bodies when it's sounded as a great resonant sound, especially when it's hit properly in the center. But if you can imagine we had lots of um, encrusted materials or garments on top of the gong and it hits, it's quickly dampened. That's like a lot of the inharmonious laws we have in our subconscious. If we're not guiding our life in a highly balanced way, it's like having a gong. It sounds the deep sense of well-being and cosmic in us, being all covered up. But as we put our lives in more system and order and let the outer self do its job and not other things that are the inner self's job, then 
well, that tremendous gong in our, or sound in our life, the richness and well-being. You know, we can spend a lot of time worrying in our life. Um, and that's actually quite useless. I know it's often thought we don't have control over our emotions. We do have a degree of control, but it's more of a matter of working in harmony. That's why we use self-mastery in this diagram here. That, uh, you know, as Dale Carnegie mentioned that uh, today is the uh, yesterday uh, that we were worrying about for tomorrow. And was it worth it? I think you'll find no, it wasn't. You know, we can also, one of the great things that we can do to work, uh, undo the, uh, the worry habit is to visualize when we're concentrating on something that's causing us stress and how is it going to turn out and so forth. Use the reasoning and all the faculties we've got, but also one can visualize it, how you wish it to progress. And one can then transmute the sort of negativity that's going into the worry into something that's constructive. And when we visualize one of the exercises we learn in our order, we then see, look for signs around us and impressions to how to act to transmute it and create the opposite of what was so concerning us. You know, often related to that too, we can often have a lot of regret in our lives. We need to accept what has happened. The inner self will let us do that. I know that's hard for often for the outer nature to keep holding on. We have to accept that it was necessary. We can change our interpretation. The inner self has a much more mature interpretation that it can convey to the outer nature. We'll find that with people who are particularly mature and we speak to them, they'll often have somewhat different or surprisingly different interpretations in us. And it's just not just a made up interpretation that actually makes a lot more sense. It actually resonates deeply with us. Whatever challenges come up in our life, you can think of yourself like an alchemist. Okay, how am I gonna transmute this situation? Don't necessarily, you get an email that's rather uh, vexing. It's good to take a few deep breaths. Don't fire back right away a response. Let the inner self come forward and see a more mature response. Take your time with it. Other ways we can think about emulating cosmic is we've been given a lot. There's a reason why we were incarnated in a particular culture. It will have back of it if we look. It may take a considerable amount of effort on our part because some cultures are more upfront than others in their mysticism. But there's a deep reason and purpose of the different cultural many of the different cultural practices that we have. At the, at the heart of culture is to raise us into the consciousness. Also associated with culture is the language. It can be our first languages and subsequent languages. The etymology or the origins of those words, they'll give us clues as to deeper, deeper, as their deeper meaning and purpose. For example, the word sacrifice actually means to make sacred from the Latin. To be edified or to learn means associated with edifice to build up. But when we become edified, we build up in our capacity of uh, in self mastery. Ed up, we add up, build up the God within recognition within us. It's always with us. I'm going to close the. Uh, PowerPoint presentation. Now I'm going to share a few more things with you. And then we'll have some time to uh, have some discussion. Now we need to take time and we need to use our reasoning and our imagination to see in our life. Because there may be a particular activity or a particular profession that you've done. You said, well, I've never seen, you know, um, someone in the order that I really looked up to or uh, a mystic that I think is really evolved or highly mature person in this profession. That maybe if that's the case, uh, or we haven't found such a person before, it throws us back more in our own resources. We have to be self-reliant, but self with a capital S, relying on that inner self. You know, if we're fortunate, we've been shown good examples by our, by our parents. 
We haven't, we can still have the guidance of the inner self. You know, the true standard in our living is the inner self, its guidance to direct us. Our parents' guidance, they would have done the best they can. Cult, the cultural situation, society around us, often it's not well directed. It has a deep aspect, as I've mentioned, to learn about your culture behind it. But as you go forward, you'll find that you need to rely more and more on the inner self, that master within. Lose your imagination and ideas to see how can I make my job, my profession, how can I bring in those cosmic experiences into it? One way that's very important always for the jo that job and way of life is to build up character. That's something very important that one can be trustworthy, that one has the virtues. Cosmic attunements will always help with that and build those up within us. Indeed, it's important in our lives to always seek the divine within at all times, to build up the virtues and character and work for the universal good and service. In that spirit, use one's imagination and thoughts and ideas will come to us and how to do it in our profession, just like the painter reconstructing on a can canvas, some inspiring thing that he's seen within and he or she has seen within and without that we see that inspires us. So too, your work can be like that. If you have very challenging situations in your, your workplace due to interpersonal relationships or just that you deal with people in very challenging situations, you'll find those daily attunements with the cosmic will give you a great deal of strength and you'll see those situations in a, a much deeper way and in some ways you'll embrace them. You know, it's very important when we have challenging situations that the outer self will maybe want to squirm out of or retreat from to embrace those situations. The inner self will let us do that if it's in good conscience. And we'll find that we can transmute that experience like the phoenix rising from the ashes, that there's a great lesson for us. It's our choice how steep of ascent we wanna make up the, up the mountain, but that's how to take the more steeper route. I think you'll find throughout life that deep calls to deep, just like our work and worship today when we meet under the sign at the appointed hour. I think you'll find that as you tune with the cosmic, that it'll reach out in surprising ways. You know, I used to work in the Department of Medicine uh, at McMaster University. I used to walk home from there. It took about a half hour. And I found with meditation that sometimes impressions would come up in meditation, but sometimes they'd come up during the walk. I'd often have surpri sometimes surprising encounters with people the outer world would call strangers, but the inner self will reach out in surprising ways in lessons uh, to us. I remember on one occasion, on one, on one of my walk, there was a young child came up to me and said to me in a very beautiful way, look, I have sense. And they said it with such beautiful innocence that it, it took down, it took the, my defense system down. You know, we have our outer defense system in terms of our senses, and being our, our reasoning to be protective. But sometimes it, that it can overprotect us and we need to uh, be open. And the pure innocence of this child uh, was a little bit like uh, standing by a, a pool of gasoline and just throwing a match in and boom, the fire went up, that tremendous fire within me. You know, we think about fire when it's well channeled, it can be highly constructive. Like an hermetic cross, we know that uh, all things in nature are renewed by fire. And I just immediately rose into the cosmic because the beautiful innocence suggested by the child was that deep, that deep sense of purity that we come into when we're working with our conscience. And I had a, a deep mystical experience, but it was like that child was a catalyst. Part of that experience had occurred earlier in my meditation that day, but my other self hadn't been fully receptive. So the circumstance there drew it forward. Find that throughout throughout life, that when we work to experience the cosmic and emulate it, circumstances will be contrived around us to help with that. The, the inner self will help reach out to draw them into place. And, while we and when we shape our environment for more and more in that cosmic image, that helps us attune with the cosmic. It's sort of a, a, a mutually reinforcing circular dual action or dual process, but in a healthy or wholesome way. As our environment is more harmoniously set up, our home, inspiring works of art, if we have flowers, type of relationships there, or in our workplace, 
that'll help attune us with the cosmic. As we attune with the cosmic, it'll help us bring those back into loving, guiding relationships with others. It will strengthen that. You know, there's always lessons before us. And daily, hourly, there's many, many lessons. Try to make the most of those lessons. You know, I think of a traditional Rosicrucian named Ben. And it was back in uh, colonial times in uh, New England. And he had an opportunity to have a conversation with the renowned Reverend Cotton Mathers in a Cotton Mathers library. Now, Ben, Ben's brother uh, was a printer and so had Ben worked in the printing industry. And Ben's brother had actually lambasted Cotton Mathers for his promotion uh, of smallpox vaccination, which was actually effective. But when Ben went to see Cotton Mathers, Cotton Mathers said nothing about that. Cotton Mathers was a much bigger person to say, do of that. He spoke on topics of their, that they were interested with books. It was quite inspiring for young Ben to meet this elder, Cotton Mathers, one of the wise persons of uh, colonial America. But when uh, they went to get up and leave the library, Ben went first out from the, out from the, the doorway, but he heard from behind him Cotton Mathers say to him, stoop, but Ben proceeded. And again, Cotton Mathers said to him, stoop. Again, Ben went forward. And next thing you know, bang, he hit his head. What Cotton Mathers was telling him was that there's a low beam in the ceiling there. You need to put stoop, get your head down. And Cotton Mathers is a great preacher and there didn't let this uh, point of lesson an object lesson growth head. He said, you know, I found throughout my life in many challenging circumstances, it's good to stoop. And in many situations that's helped me carry the day. And this is a application of the law of humility. And Ben applied that for the rest of his life. He went on to be one of the greatest states persons the world has ever known and has caused great upliftment to the United States and the world. And who am I talking about? None other than of course, the beloved traditional Rosicrucian and Rosicrucian sage, Benjamin Franklin. So there's tremendous lessons in our lives. Sometimes we can draw them forward and you're looking over a lake or rising up into a high place. Use that as a period for the outer nature to take in the sights and sounds of the expansive view to have that cosmic attunement. You see, it's very important in our life to move from perception to conception. That way it transforms our life. I remember once I was uh, at a stoplight and I just looked over and there was a car beside me and I could see a young person, young man in the car. And it was like I was seeing that uh, a human being for the first time. And I realized at that point that what I was seeing was actually an impression I had in meditation earlier that day, but it was being clothed by the outer mind in this experience. And I saw what a profound thing it is to be a human being, to be one with the one, one with God. Does this mean this young person was a, a, a cosmic master? in flesh, possibly, but not necessarily. What it meant for me though, is I got to see human being for the first time. And the way that that was a cosmic experience, yes, but then how do I use this to convert to emulate into the daily life? From then on, it meant a deep, profound respect for the divine within other persons, no matter how they're behaving or acting. And that helps drive, increase our uh, sense of affinity and love for others. You know, I'll say one last thing and then we'll have a little, some discussion. You know, one of my beloved Rosicrucian mentors, um, I remember in her life, she talked to, talked to me about use of will. She mentioned early in her life, when she was growing up, she did the will of her parents. And then when she was married, she did the will of her spouse. But then she came to realize the, the sort of suffering that was, she was doing by doing the will of others. She thought, ah, I'll get out of this state of deprivation by doing my will. And so finally she asserted herself and did her, was following her own will finally. And that's a great achievement in many respects, especially in a worldly way. But she still realized that she was in a great state of deprivation. What she needed to do and she realized is she needed to find, follow the will of God or the will of divine within. And then finally she was able to be fully herself of the greatest service to herself and others and one with the one. This is what we're called to in experiencing the cosmic and then emulating it. 
In this way, this dual process is the key to understanding life and our self-mastery and why mysticism is so practical. Thank you.